Well, for more than a century, the Xavier Society for the Blind has been helping visually impaired men, women, and children develop and practice their faith. Take a look. That is the sound of a book being embossed in Braille at the Xavier Society for the Blind. The society was founded 120 years ago by a Jesuit priest, Father Joseph Stadelman, and a blind teacher, Margaret Coffey. She recognized that there was a need for the, children, for the blind children that she was teaching, you know, basically Sunday school to. Uh, she recognized that there was a need for books, you know, workbooks and textbooks for those children um, learning about their Catholic faith. So they formed Xavier Society. And she was not only, you know, a co-founder, she was one of our uh, original and largest donors. She provided $350 of her own money at the time, which we calculated to be about $11,000 in today's dollars. So it was a lot of money for uh, a young blind woman at that time. So um, she, you know, not only inspired our mission, uh, but also I think inspires many of our, our donors today because uh, as was the case at that time, uh, we provide all our materials free of charge. Their mission is to provide the word of God to blind and visually impaired people of faith. We've got about um, 800 books in Braille and a, a like number, 800 or so books in audio that are available. And those are books. And then in addition to that, uh, we provide the Sunday Mass propers in Braille. Uh, and that goes to about 800 people each and every month uh, all across the United States, in addition to about 20 countries outside the United States. Um, and that we did a rough back of the envelope calculation a couple of years ago, that amounts to about 750,000 pages of Braille each and every year. The Sunday Mass Propers help clients like Bill McCann and Charlene Kraft participate as lectors. Father Jamie Dennis started receiving them when he was in college. And as I've progressed through seminary, uh, the Xavier Society has helped me with uh, liturgical items as well as spiritual books and uh, Catholic magazines. And the Xavier Society has also been good at helping me to network with other blind Catholics, especially guys who are discerning priesthood and don't know if there's any other blind priests out there. While most of what the Society offers is Catholic and religious, that's not all. We're trying to choose books that are uh, more widely popular. So for example, uh, this book by uh, Jeannie Gaffigan, uh, When Life Gives You Pears, uh, is more inspirational. I mean, she's Catholic and she talks about her Catholic faith and her family um, and how they sustained her during a very, very serious uh, medical crisis. Um, so while technically it's not you know, a, a, a uh, theological document, uh, it's inspirational. Inspiration and faith at a person's fingertips or on audio. I guess it was last year we started a pilot where we converted um, most of our popular existing titles to the digital talking book format on cartridge, which is capable of being played on the players that are provided free of charge by the National Library Service for the blind and physically handicapped. So it's estimated that those players uh, have been distributed to about a half a million people in the United States. So we figured by providing our content in that format, we'd be able to reach many, many more people. The society's most popular title is the Catechism, and the biggest has to be the Bible it fills an entire bookcase. We had funding um, a few years ago uh, to produce the, the Bible, um, Old and New Testament. And when we announced that we were doing that, everybody wanted a set. And then the boxes arrived and they saw just, you know, how, how many volumes were That's included. Volume, all yeah, of all of those, those volumes, uh, 45 volumes. Over the years, the technology has changed dramatically, but the mission remains the same, to help children and adults learn about, develop, and practice their faith. There are many, many more people out there that if they knew about us, um, they, we can be serving them now. Potentially thousands. Yep, I believe so. And joining me now via Skype from Manhattan is Maliki Fallon, the executive director of the Xavier Society for the Blind. And uh, we just want to make sure you get the word out there. You can help so many more people, but a lot of people just don't know what's offered. That's right. So that's why we appreciate this opportunity. And that segment was just so wonderful to help us get the word out. 
you know, as a, as a small nonprofit, we don't spend money on advertising. So over the years in our 120 year history, we've really had to rely on word of mouth and, and just through uh, people in parishes and schools for blind people and visually impaired people spreading the word for us. So, uh, but we're trying to do more. We're trying to get better at it and spread the word. And we're hoping we can do that too. <laughs> Great. Now, your materials, all free of charge. How is that possible? You have to obviously rely on a lot of donations. That's right. That's right. So as I uh, had said earlier, Margaret Coffey, one of our co-founders, she started us out and was not only an inspiration for our mission, um, but also pro provided funding through a donation. Uh, so we do rely on donations from individuals, from foundations. We get a lot of support from uh, family foundations and Catholic family foundations, small foundations uh, that have an affinity for uh, organizations that serve the blind um, and that relate to religion and uh, Catholicism in particular. Um, so we get a lot of support from from individuals as well as small family foundations. I know you also rely on volunteers and you and I had talked uh, about a month ago about COVID and actors in the city really being shut down from their work. So a lot of them have been volunteering to help you. That's right, that's right. So it's great, we, we started a new model just last year as we've tried to move more of our audiobook content uh, into the new format that's playable on the players provided by the National Library Service for the blind and print disabled. Uh, we we purchased equipment uh, with a money received grant from the Lavelle Fund for the Blind um, to set up volunteer readers to do the reading um, at their own location, basically at home. So even during the COVID crisis, when we were in a lockdown mode, our terrific volunteers continued to record books. Um, so we were able to continue to produce those books and make them available to our, our patrons and clients. And your reaction from your clients, what kind of reaction are you getting? Well, I, you know, I think that they're very, very grateful because I think uh, being blind or having a, a severe visual impairment, uh, what I hear is that, that those people feel a great sense of isolation to begin with. And that was exacerbated by the COVID crisis and not being able to get to church or get to their um, different activities within their community. So having new titles, new books uh, available uh, to help them continue to learn about, develop, and practice their faith uh, was very, very helpful. So th they've been thrilled. You know, the feedback that, that we've gotten is that they've been thrilled that we've been able to continue to distribute uh, existing titles as well as produce new titles during the pandemic. Somebody's listening out there right now and they think, okay, I know somebody who can benefit from this. How does someone become a client? So it's very simple. You can go to our website, XavierSocietyForTheBlind.org. Uh, you can email us info at XavierSocietyForTheBlind.org. Or you can just reach us via our 1-800 number, which is 1-800-637-9193. And the, the registration process is, is very simple. Uh, we're not trying to put up any barriers. We want to help as many people as we can, but we just want to ensure that the folks that we are helping, in fact, uh, you know, require our assistance. I know every year you have a, a, a mass in Manhattan that is very special. It's in December. Um, you're still hoping to have that this year? We are, we are, but just given conditions, it's a little less certain this year. But I think what we're, uh, what we'll try to do and what we've been working on, uh, and you featured Father Jamie Dennis in uh, the earlier segment, uh, I think in any event we'll be able to live stream uh, a mass uh, for the, in honor of St. Lucy, the patron saint, one of the patron saints of the blind. So we'll be doing that on uh, Monday, December 14th, because this year the Feast of St. Lucy falls on a Sunday, so we'll default to the, the following day to have the, the Mass. Okay, Malky, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, hopefully more, more people will be calling. Great. Well, Colleen, thanks very much. Great seeing you again. Nice seeing you too.